In this video, we're going to go ahead and solve something called an evil scribble. Hey everyone, it's Matt Scribbles, and I don't know if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, but I post a lot of these evil scribbles at least once or twice a week, and I think it'll be really fun to start posting them on YouTube in a more long form so you can see how you can solve it. So here's what we're dealing with. We have a huge integral here where the lower bounds are from negative six to six of u squared over four sine of u cubed times, and then the upper limit is this limit as y approaches infinity of e to the 10 y over y to the 10th minus six y cubed minus seven. And then you have this entire integral that looks a little nasty, but it's actually not that difficult to solve. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and see how you can solve it first, and then we're gonna get to it. Okay, so let's get started here. Let's work with our lower bound. And though you might think that you want to use some substitution, you're going to notice that it's actually much easier than that because you have an even function on the top and then you're going to have an odd function on the bottom here. So whenever you have an even and you're dividing it by an odd, well, that's also just going to be an odd function. And one of the things that they tell us is that whenever you have a function from negative a to a of f of x, where f of x is an odd function, that's going to equal to zero. Now, this one was probably the most controversial part of this entire integral because a lot of people were saying that it's undefined at zero. And though that's true, you can put it on Desmos and you'll see that you'll also get zero as that integral. So we already know that this bottom bound here is going to be zero. So let's go ahead and get started up on top. Well, we have a limit as y approaches infinity. And you might think, uh, let's go ahead and use some direct substitution where well, you're going to get infinity over infinity on the top and on the bottom, which tells us that we can use L'Hopital's rule. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do. But one of the things that you're going to see is the top. If you take, for example, the derivative one time, you're going to get 10e to the 10y, which is great. But then on the bottom, you get 10y to the ninth minus 30y to the fourth. And it's just going to become a little more complicated. Well, you're still going to get infinity over infinity. So guess what? You have to take L'Hopital's rule multiple times. But one of the things that you'll see is that this pattern will eventually yield a constant the more you take the derivative. So if you take this, uh, I think, nine derivatives, you will get a constant on the bottom. But the top will always stay consistent. It's going to become 10 squared e to the 10y, then 10 cubed e to the 10y, and so on. So eventually, the top will still be infinity. The bottom will be a constant. So what we're going to have is we're going to have infinity as our upper bound. So, so far, we have the integral from zero to infinity. And now we just have to start dealing with all these other things. Well, we have e to the x, which e to the x is just e to the x. e to the i pi is the Euler formula, very famous, the Euler identity. That's going to be negative 1 plus, and then now we continue with the series. Do you recognize that? That's just the Maclaurin series for sine. So this is the Maclaurin series for sine, but then you square it, you get sine squared plus cosine squared. Wow, what do you know? That is equal to one. So right now we have e to the x minus one plus one. So it'll eventually just become e to the x on the top. So let's worry about the bottom. On the bottom, we have this geometric series. You have three halves and then you have sine of pi over six. So let's go ahead and just start simplifying that now. Well, sine of pi over six, if you know your unit circle, it's just one half. So we have the summation from zero to infinity of, we have three halves, and then we have one half to the power of n. Now remember, the geometric series will converge as long as the common ratio or the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one. And in this case it is, it's just one half. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this formula right here, where a of zero is the first term over one minus the common ratio. Well, a of zero, if you were to plug in zero for the initial term here, you will have three halves times one half to the power of zero, which is just three halves. So we have three halves over one minus the common ratio, which is one half. You can simplify this as three halves over one half, which would just become three. So what we have here is we simply have three plus e to the two x. So we have three, whoops, let's go ahead and continue using yellow here. So we have three plus e to the two x with respect to x. So let's go ahead and start simplifying our integral a little further. Well, we have zero to infinity. We establish that the top is just e to the x, and then we have three plus e to the two x dx. All right, 
So now what we can do is a simple substitution. We can make u equal to e to the x. So if we have u equal to the e to the x, then our differential du will become e to the x dx. And this is perfect because we can divide the e to the x to the other side and we have du over e to the x is equal to dx, which is perfect because that's exactly what we're gonna use for our dx there. Okay, before we start rewriting this, we need to remember that our bounds are in terms of x, so we need to rewrite them in terms of u. So what do we got? When x is equal to zero, which was our lower bound, e to the x or u will become e to the zero, which is just one. So we have u is equal to one. And when x, I don't like writing this, but is x equals to zero, it's really approaching infinity. I said zero, but I meant infinity there. You don't necessarily plug it in, you shouldn't be doing that, you should be using a limit. But I'm just gonna say that this is, as x approaches infinity, u is gonna approach e to the infinity, which is also infinity. And again, I'm putting equal sign, not the best uh, way to write it, but I'm just gonna stick with it there. So now our integral is gonna become, we have one to infinity of e to the x over three plus u squared, because remember our u value was e to the x times du over e to the x. And the e to the x is cancel out, which is exactly what we want because now we have a nice integral, one to infinity of du over one plus u squared. Whoops, that's not a one, that should be a three. Okay, I hope you recognize this as a simple arc tan integral, which is gonna become one over root three tan inverse of u over root three. And then we're implementing the first fundamental theorem of calculus from one to infinity. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this off. Now again, I don't like necessarily plugging in infinity, you're really approaching infinity, but hopefully we get the, uh, the idea of what happens when we have something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and put the graph of tangent here on the screen so you know that when we approach infinity or we're coming from the left side, we're approaching positive infinity, tangent or the arc tangent approaches pi over two. So what we have is we have one over three, times pi over two minus, and then we're gonna go ahead and plug in a one here, the tan inverse of one over root three, we should definitely recognize that if we know our simple arc tan, that's gonna be pi over six. So we have one over root three times pi over six. Now I wanna get some common denominators here, so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by three, so that I get three pi over six root three minus pi over six root three, and this will equal to two pi over six root three, and we can simplify this a little further by simplifying the fraction here. This will become a one, this is a three, and now we're gonna get our final answer of pi over root three, or pi over three root three. Hopefully that makes more sense. And if you don't like the radical there, you can always just multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate, and you will be good to go. And that is it for the Evil Scribble. Now be sure to subscribe here to my YouTube channel where I'm gonna be posting an Evil Scribble once a week, but also you can follow me on TikTok or Instagram where I'm posting more of these and other different content on there. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you wanna solve anything else, please let me know in the comments, and I'll talk to you soon.